very fortunate to be working with a company like Banzoogle, which uh, allows us to turn our website into like a really functional home base for our business. And uh, we can set up shows and create ticket links for those shows right on our website. And they don't take, they don't take money from that. And that's a big game changer for us. About five years before the pandemic started, um, I started a tour that I called the Get Folked House Concert Tour. And basically, we have this incredible fan community. And as you guys probably know, a huge part of folk history is is playing house concerts uh, and playing concerts in barns and fields and all sorts of non-traditional places. And so. Um, I think it was 2016, 15, 14. I really can't remember when it started, but basically I just went out to the fans and I said, look, I'm giving the band a month off. And uh, if you want me to show up to your home and play a show, let us know. I've got a team that can teach you how to host a concert and we'll take care of your ticket sales. And you can apply here. And we created an online application. Hundreds of fans applied. And that became this awesome annual tradition. The Get Folked House Concert Tour turned into two months. I would cram like 60 shows into two months. I would do double headers on the weekend. Oh, man. All (laughs) over the country. I was just, right. And we would just, now it took a tremendous amount of work on the back end, right? When I talk about our gross and how much money I spend on my team, I have to hire extra people on my team to handle stuff like spreadsheets for ticket sales. And to I I have a team that knows how to talk to potential hosts and say, this is how you host a concert. This is how you're going to be successful. This is how you're going to create a seating spot and turn your living room into a concert space. This is how we're going to maximize tickets. This is how you create a good listening environment. But it's been an amazing uh, journey and a huge supporting revenue stream and a really special experience. Anytime you can go to a fan's house and give them a truly intimate experience, sit around and tell stories, let them know about yourself and play and play it is is diving deep with people to share an intimate experience in that uh that will those fans are going to become the core of your engine right that is that, mm-hmm. that you can that that you can do anything with so fast forward to the pandemic and i'm live streaming every single night and the summer is rolling around um we we did this crazy thing this was pre-vaccine we did the crazy thing we called them live gatherings. We used a very similar model to our house concerts where we had a spreadsheet, we had host applicants, we sold tickets through our website, and we even had an algorithm through which people submitted the square footage of their backyards. This all had to be outside and we had to keep people safe from each other, right? Like we we did not know what was gonna be happening. So we created, no, you could buy tickets in pod groups and depending on your pod group, your pod size would change and the boundary around your pod between your pod and another pod would change. And so as people bought their tickets, our spreadsheets would subtract the square footage used from the available square footage. So we can never oversell a backyard. And we had this huge list of rules for wearing masks, for using sanitizer. We played a hundred socially distanced potted shows with just fans hosting and fans coming without one case of anyone getting sick during the pandemic before vaccines. And it was a huge testament to the power of community when they when they can organize and motivate. Um, But that was a huge part of that revenue stream. Um, I'm looking at some of the stats from Banzoogle that they shared with me. uh, And they said that the the non-traditional touring ticket sales came in at $142,000. And that was just 
That was just us saying, hey, you know what? We can't play into venues. We're going to make this happen. We're going to find outdoor spaces and we're going to respect one another and we're going to do this safely. If you've got an outdoor space and you want to you wanna organize, we'll help you organize. We'll help you do that. Apply. And hundreds of people did it. And it was it was an inspiring experience. The uh, square footage algorithm calculator it really throws a wrench in that whole thing where you're like, we need to oversell this venue by five or ten percent because people <laughs> always don't show up. It's like you got to get it exact. How about this? How about this? It's even worse than that because if it's if it's raining, you just cancel. So if you've got, you can't play inside. You're completely weathered. I mean, it's just we had to completely change the way we thought about playing music and getting out there, right? So, I mean, and our tickets were $40 a ticket, right? And we were mostly doing very small shows, 50 people at a show, all right? There were stretches where we would play every single night in a weekend, right? But, you know, you can do the math, right? If a show that sells 50 tickets at a $40 ticket, get if it's raining that day, yeah, well, you lose two thousand dollars, and we lose another thousand dollars in merch too, right? And that's that was it, right? Like the numbers just went up. We had to, we had to learn to not depend on any one particular situation, right? And that mm-hmm. it was really, really hard. And the way we, the way we oversold, to go back to what you were saying, the way we oversold is we oversold ourselves. We booked too <laughs> many shows because. Some of those shows were gonna were gonna get canceled. 